thank God for today. Um, the last time I was, I shared the word with you, I believe that I shared on the topic of how to receive from God. And I believe that one of the things that we learned was that some of us, we know that God has blessed us with everything, but it's in the heavenly place. He said he has given us everything that we needed that pertains to life and godliness. But he, he, he didn't forget to tell us where that good things are. And he said they are in heavenly places. And so then it falls on you and me to find out how do we assess these things that has been given to us. Because he has told us that in his stripes, in the stripes of Jesus, you and I, we were healed. We are not going to be healed. We were healed. It means that our healing is already in the past. We have already been healed. So why am I sick? Why have I not received my healing? Why is it that I'm still praying yet I am sick? Then the secret says, the secret is showing us that these things are in the heavenly places. So how do we assess these things? And I believe this is the heart of God. For us all, this is what the Lord wants us to know. And so um, my, my, my work to us today is to teach us again on how to receive from God. So please, if you have your Bibles, kindly let us go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For your presence in this place those who just join us god bless you all for joining our healing school today please don't go because i'm going to be honest with you we have been praying and we have been praying for you and we strongly believe that the lord has a word for you today and so please share this broadcast invite your friends tell them that we are on and i believe that you are definitely going to be blessed today um and so um, let's read something from Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 11. Isaiah 40 verse 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to read from the King James Version. Um, but I, I can also read from the other version. This is what the King James says. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I can dance with this right now. The Bible says this. Isaiah the prophet is telling you. He's, he's, prof he's, he's telling us today. He said, he shall. Who is he talking about? He's saying, God shall feed his flock. Who is his flock? You and I who have believed in him. You and I who have accepted him as our Lord and our Savior. You and I who, 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 who says that God, you are all that we have. He says he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. And carry them in his bosom, my God from Zion. I hope you have your Bibles with you. I hope you have your Bibles and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I, I want you, if you have your Bibles, kindly read this word to yourself. Put yourself in it. 
and let us read it again. He says, God shall feed me like a shepherd. That is how I read the word of the Lord for myself. Somebody is prophesying. Somebody is teaching me. A prophet comes in and he's showing me what the mind of God is towards me. He is telling me that this is what, this is how God sees you. This is how God thinks about you. Emmy, God bless you. Nana, God bless you for joining. Please kindly share this broadcast and invite your friends in. And he is telling us what God is going to do. And he's saying that God shall feed me like a shepherd. What does a shepherd do? David gave us the, the, the picture of what a shepherd looks like. David gave us because David was a shepherd. He could relate to God. He could see God in how, how, how he takes care of him. I mean David. David had an understanding of how God takes care of him in the forest. You see, David spent his whole life, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Help me, help me take my time to express this word the way I feel in my spirit. When, when the Holy Spirit was teaching me, I was asking him. I, I didn't read in any part that David went to school. There was nothing like, he, he spent most of his time in the deep, in the forest. He spent most of his time being with the sheep, with the lambs. David spent most of his life with the grass and with animals, with lions. With, with the tigers coming in to, to, to get the, the sheep and the lamb. So I was asking, how can such a man compose all the sounds? How can such a man write all these beautiful things? How can such a man have a heart to train the most... The, 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 uh, Solomon is described as um, um, you, the most glorious king. The king who was the, who was so wise, a king who was who was all the words you can use for Solomon. Yes, you will tell me because God gave him the wisdom. But I am here to tell you this: when you read, the Bible says that Solomon expressed the fact that it was my father who taught me that wisdom is the principal thing. It was my mother who made me aware that wisdom is all that I need if I am going to be successful. And this is the same wisdom that I had, God has told us that Jesus has become our wisdom. Oh my God from Zion. He says Jesus has become unto us the wisdom of God. So what am I telling you? I am not telling you that with all these things that are going on in life, in all these things that are going on in the world, with all the difficulties that you are going through life, with all the reports you are seeing, you are receiving, Jesus has become your wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom that you need to navigate yourself in this world right now. Somebody, amen, thank you, mommy. Somebody, if you have not received Jesus, this is the time to receive Jesus. And if you have Jesus, this is the time to be serious with him. Because he has become your wisdom. Now, let me go back to the word. The word of the Lord says that he shall feed me like a shepherd. What does a shepherd do, Emilia? God bless you, daddy. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd protects his flock. A shepherd leads his flock. In fact, when I was reading and I went through what a shepherd does, for the first time in my life, I realized that it says that a shepherd is a friend. My God. How can God be my friend? The Bible tells me, he says that he calls Abraham his friend. It means that you and I, we have, we can develop ourselves into a stature that we become friends with God. You become friends with the Almighty, the Creator of the universe, the uncompassed God, the one who made the skies, the one who makes it rain. He is the one who can be your friend. And if you have a friend like this, what else do you need? If you have a friend like God, Pat, what do you need? If you have a friend who can tell you that, hey, there is a storm that 
man is coming. I want you to hide under my cliff. What do you need? Sometimes as Christians, I think that, and I believe so strongly that we do not know what we have. Let me tell you, let me share this. About some weeks, uh, about some weeks ago, I, I was just meditating on something. I was in, I, I, I will tell you, I was in this, the school of discipline of the Holy Spirit. And then he said something to me that is so powerful and I know it will bless somebody. He said, you know, a lion. It's a lion, even when he is wounded. My God. He says a lion still remains a lion, even when he is wounded. There are some animals in the forest, the very moment they see a lion, they will not even come near him. Because he is still a lion, even though he's wounded. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. When he said that word to me, I just wanted to, to just dance in my room. Some of you, sometimes you are going through certain things and you don't know who, sometimes you begin to question your identity. You begin to question, what, 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 is, it, is it really true that God is with me? Is it really true that God's eyes are on me? Oh yes, God's eyes are on you. And he, is yet, he says I should tell you that a lion is a lion even though he is wounded. You are still a lion. You are still the child of a king. He looks at you with fondness. He looks at you with love. And he says, I am your shepherd. I am the one guarding you. I am the one who has made you for my pastures. My desire for you is that I will provide for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Felix, did you hear what God is saying to you today? He says, I am your shepherd. I will lead you. I will lead you. That is why, you see, when David understood how he, he got, how the love that he had for his flocks, then he began to understand why God loves him. Because, you see, as a child, he was a child. You see, I will never allow my 12-year-old child. My son, my firstborn is 12 years. There is no way I am going to allow my son to take shift to the forest. Where I know there are wild beasts there, mommy. I wouldn't do that. But David was left alone. My God, let me take a minute to minister to somebody here. Maybe you are all alone. Sometimes, even in the midst of family, you are all alone. You don't have anybody. You don't even, if, if sometimes, if you don't even come to church, or you don't even go to, out, you don't go outside, you don't even have anybody to talk to. But God is here and he's saying that I am your shepherd. I want to be your friend. I want to be the one you talk to, not your phone. I want to be the first one you seek when you go out. My God from Zion. David knew that. And he says, I know that you are my shepherd. The way I care for the lamb. You see, when the lamb, the, the sheep has given birth to the lamb. And it's so tender. Sometimes they cannot. When they when when you look when you watch a documentary, they, 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 when they, they are being birthed, they can't even walk properly. My God, sometimes they can't even walk properly. They, they, they are stumbling. And sometimes David is guarding the other flocks. So what he has to do is to carry this lamb until he is strong enough. Some of you, you are going through difficult situations in your life. You do not even understand what is going on with you. But God says, I am your shepherd. Sometimes when you think that the footsteps that you see are your footsteps, I am here to tell you they are not. They are God's footsteps holding you, carrying you through the dangers, maneuvering you. The wolves that are all around trying to devour you, God says, I'm the one who is carrying you. Like a lamb, he says, I will carry you in my bosom, my God from Zion. I am carrying you. I am the one. Lucia, I am the one. You think it is you. No, it is not you. I am the one who is carrying you. I am your good shepherd. Amen. I am your friend. I am the one who loves you. I am the one who sees the tears at night. I am the one who feels when you are afraid. I am the one who knows your heart. I am the one. I am your good shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he says, he shall gather the lambs with his arm. He will 
will gather you with his arm. He is not going to let the angels carry you. My God from Zion. He is not letting anybody carry you. Some of you, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes when you are in a tight corner, you, you don't even know who to call. And those that you can call, they don't even pick your calls. And God is saying that, don't you understand, Nana? Emilia, don't you understand that whatever thing that I am doing, I am the one who is carrying you. I don't want to share my glory with anybody. That when you have passed through that difficult situation, you will come back and say, oh, it was my friend Charity who was there for me. God says, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. I am the one who carried you, Lucia. I am the one at the night when you were crying, drenching your pillow with tears. I am the one who carried you. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Amen. I will gather the lambs with my, with my arms. I, I, the Lord, I am carrying you. I will not let anybody come near you. I am carrying you. Somebody, I want you to know God is carrying you. God is the one who is carrying you, who is holding you. And let me tell you where he puts you. He says that and carry them in his bosom. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody. I want to see you. I want to see you put that something, tie something out there if God is speaking with you. He says, I will carry you in my bosom. Why the bosom of God? Holy Spirit, why? Why are you carrying Anna in, his, in your bosom? Why are you carrying Pat in your bosom? Why are you carrying that person watching me in your bosom? Why are you saying that, my child, I am carrying you in my bosom? Why? Why the bosom of God? You know what is in the bosom of God? It is the heart of God. The heart of God is here. It's in his bosom. His heart. He says that you don't know how precious you are to me. You don't know the thoughts that I think towards you. You don't know that Phyllis, they are good thoughts, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. He says, I know, that is why I'm carrying you here. Can you not feel my heart beat? I am the good shepherd. And I love you. Amen. I love you. My God. My God from Zion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in this place. Amen. We thank you for what you are doing in the life of your people right now. We thank you. We thank you for that person that feels alone right now. I pray for them in the name of Jesus. That even as your word is coming, Lord, you will know, they will know that you are carrying them in your bosom. That they will know that your love is encompassing all around them right now. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your glory right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's continue with what he said. And he said, and shall gently lead those that are with young. You know, sometimes it baffles me. It blows my mind how God is so detailed. <laughs> it, it, it amazes me how God is so detailed. If you, if you just join us, I am reading from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11. Isaiah chapter 40, the verse 11. He is saying to us that and he and God shall gently lead those that are with young. You might think that as God is guiding you, he might leave yours and yours alone. Your children and maybe even your spouse and no, 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 no. Some of you, you are doing certain things in the name of God. Maybe God has called you into the ministry. Let me take some few minutes, minutes and minister to somebody. And I'm ministering to myself, even as the Holy Spirit is giving me utterance. You see, God has called you into certain areas in ministry. He has called you into certain areas, whether it's your work or whatever. And when you are doing it, you are worried. You are worried how, who is going to take care of my children? Who is going to take care of my, my, my home? Who is, God is saying that I am the one who carries you and leads you with your young it means that everything that you think that 
it needs to feed on you, my God, because you are the host. Hallelujah. Because you are the one that is even carrying your family. Mommy, we, we as mothers, sometimes, you know, when, when I'm coming here in the evening, let me use myself as an example. My God, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, when I'm coming in the evening and I have to leave my kids, my, my home and come for prayer meeting, I'm worried. I'm worried. You know, it's Friday. And, and most of the time, Friday night, I want to watch movies with my kids. Because throughout the week, they have gone to school and all that. So I want to spend time with them. And then I'm thinking, sometimes I want to balance it. Because I've been here probably in the afternoon. And, and, and I have to go home. They come from school. I, I'm cooking and all that stuff. I don't get time to do everything. And I still want to come here in the evening and, and pray. And I'm worried. And then God is today, he's telling you and me. He says that I will carry you and your young. My God, you think that you are missing something whilst you are leaving your children at home. Maybe you are leaving your husband at home. Maybe you have to go to work and you are wondering who is going to take off my, my, my family. Benedicta, God is saying to you, when I carry you, when you come into my presence, your young is with you. My God from Zion. He's saying that you have all your family in your bosom. Yeah. He says, I am carrying you part, not only you, but your children. Amen. Everything that is connected to you, I carry them with you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good shepherd. Oh my God. And he says, why are we not receiving that from him? Why are we not receiving all these good promises from the Lord? Why is it that we are not seeing these things that he said it is possible unto them that believe? Why is it that sometimes I feel so alone that I think that I'm going to go crazy? Why? Somebody, if you are here, this word is blessing you. Why don't you share this word? The groups you are in, share this word. Maybe somebody needs to be encouraged. Maybe you are the one who is going to share this word and somebody will see and say, God is speaking to me. Why are we not receiving it? Because every word of God is yea and amen. Every promises that you see in the scriptures, they are real and you can receive it. But why are we not seeing it? Let us go up. The same scripture. I'm not going to change. The same scripture. Go up. Let's go to the best one. I'll be finishing very soon. But I feel the Holy Spirit in this place and I sense him right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why are we not receiving what, the, what God has promised us? He says this. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says the Lord. <laughs> comfort ye, comfort ye, says the Lord. My God. Comfort. Why? Why this afternoon, Lord, if you want to say anything to us, you are telling me that I should comfort your people. Why am I not receiving the promises that you have said? And you are saying that I should comfort them. Now, now, this is why he's saying it. The word comfort is to console somebody. You see, when somebody has lost and you come to the person and you speak kind words to them, you say that, oh, take heart, God is in control. I know that I cannot take away the pain, but I know that when time heals all wounds, God is saying that I am here today. I want you to speak a word of comfort, to have compassion, show them compassion through the words that you speak. Some of us good shepherds that you have been called over the, 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 the flocks of God. God is saying that a time is coming and now is the time that I want you to comfort my people. My God, I don't know where that one came from, but I know the Holy Spirit is saying, speaking to somebody. He says, I want you to comfort my flocks. I want you to speak a kind word to them. And then he repeats, he says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Say it, the Lord. The Lord is saying to us, 
Some of you, when you meet your friend on the street, when you sit in the bus with somebody, when you go to your workplace, please be kind to somebody. You do not know what the other person is going through. You have no clue how their children are messing up at home. You have no idea how they are being depressed. Oh my God. The system, it, because you see, that is how God has made it. He says at the end, when everything is coming to an end, there are difficult times that are going to arise. And this is the time that God is calling you and I. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the heart of God. This is the time that God is calling you and me. And he's saying that I want you to comfort my people. I want you to speak kind words to them. I want you to tell them that that sea is the Lord. This is the heart of God for you. Fellas, I desire good for you. I want to heal you. And this is what he continued to say, Daddy. The verse 2, Isaiah chapter 40, he says, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. When was this last time you interceded for somebody? When was the last time you went on your knees and you didn't pray for yourself? But you said, oh, I'm going to pray for Pa today. I'm going to pray for Emily today. I'm going to pray for you, Lucia. Ah, I feel a burden in my spirit that I need to intercede for somebody. God is saying, cry unto her. And this is what he wants me to tell you today. If you didn't hear anything that I say, mommy, when you look in your Bible, it says that her warfare is accomplished. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> your warfare is accomplished. Amen. The things that you have been wrestling with, hallelujah, receive this word. He says the things that you have been wrestling with, the things that doesn't want to go, the things that you are fighting with uh, in your dreams, the things that has been come wrestling with you, the things that says you cannot make it, uh, the things that are, are just saying that who, who are you, what do you think you are, who do you think you are, those things the Bible says, God says I should tell you, your warfare is accomplished and that is good news. I wish somebody you can put that aim in there. You can type your aim into the glory of God uh, and say, I receive it. Uh, my warfare is accomplished. What does it mean to be accomplished? The word accomplished, this is what it means. To be full, fullness, abundance. To come to an end. To consecrate, fill the hand. To be filled, be armed, be satisfied. To come to an end. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you read and you, you hear these words, you put them into yourself. So whatever situation that you find yourself in, and God is saying, my mercy, God bless you, sis. I still owe you a call. God is saying to you, whatever thing that you are going through, whatever thing that it is that you are wrestling with, it is ended. Oh, baby, you didn't hear what I said. I said, God is saying that, tell them, prophesy, decree this word unto them, that their warfare is accomplished. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would put my dancing shoes up and begin to magnify the Lord in my room, wherever you are. Begin to bless, this. just take a 30 second break and begin to bless the Lord for his word. Begin to magnify him. He says, your warfare has been accomplished. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you. This is a good word. And then he didn't end there, daddy. Then he continues to say that her iniquity is being pardoned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been pardoned. What? Everything that the enemy had against you, whatever evidence that they had against you, today I am standing in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, and I decree and I declare that he says your iniquity is pardoned. Amen. Do you know what that means? Hallelujah. So many times I tell you that the enemy deals with legalities. When the devil goes, and he presents his accusation. It is something that you have done. He doesn't present things that you have not done. 
<laughs> oh, you tell me that the devil is a liar. Trust me. When he goes, he knows God is all-knowing. He doesn't go there and predict what you will do. He goes there and he says, this is what Nana has done. God, you cannot bless her because this is what Emmy did. This is what he just said. But God steps in. My God. Because you are in his bosom. Ah, because of the finished work of Calvary. Because of what Jesus did. And he says, I know. But because of Jesus, you are pardoned. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Felix, did you hear that? Hallelujah. He says, because of Jesus, you are pardoned. Hallelujah. <laughs> for sh hey. And then he asked, for she had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. My God. When he is saying to you, Mami, you see, this is what you have done. God, you can't do this for her. The God says you are pardoned. And then this is what God is saying again. Hey, he is adding it insult to injury. He's saying that she had received of the Lord's, of the Lord's hand, on the Lord's, from the Lord's hand, a double for all her sins. Amen. Hey! Amen. He's not cursing you. He is telling you, because I have pardoned her, everything that she's going to get is double. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we do not know how blessed that we are. When God tells you that I have blessed you with every blessing, everything that you need, everything that you will ever need, I have blessed you with them. Amen. Double for your trouble. Amen. Amen. I think that this is where they got that phrase. Double for your trouble. Mm -hmm. Everything. Double for my hand. Says the Lord. Ha! <sighs> Ah, uh, let me add this, the three and four, and then I'm out of this place. He says, the three says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of for our God. Some of you, you know, when we put some seed in the ground, we don't take time to water it. When we have prayed and we believe God for certain things, we don't take time and wait on the Lord. I know that this verse has been um, labeled or it has been um, um, spoken in connection to John the Baptist. That he is the voice crying out. But in the context of what I am teaching now, what God is saying to us is that because I have spoken, because I am the good shepherd who has spoken to you. That I am crying. It is my desire. You are crying to me. And it is my desire for me to bless you. And I have already pardoned you. And because I have given you double from my hand. This is what I am saying to you. Prepare ye the way for the Lord. Amen. My God. Prepare. Make room. If there are certain things in your life that doesn't please the Lord. When you know God is going to bless you. When you know God is going to do a new thing in your life. It is high time you let these things go. Prepare ye the way for the Lord. Make way his path straight. When we were praying this uh, before we came online. One of the things that the Holy Spirit led us to pray is that, Lord, search my heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank God. I didn't know this, but when you were praying, he just, he just brought it to my, 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 my remembrance. We were praying that, Lord, search my heart. Even those that are coming to listen to us, if there is anything that is in the inside of us that will not make us receptive of your word, take it away. And so he said, because I have already blessed you, you are going to be, you will be your own stamping block. You are the one who is going to block the river from flowing. I am reading a book. The Lord led me to read something. And praise be to God, I, 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 I have finished my, my, my second book. And very soon it will be, it will be available for, us, for you to, to, to have access to it. And I'm working on the third one. And I, 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 I've been prayerfully asking the Lord about, about stuff. And he led me some way, somehow, to read a particular book. If you've heard of Watchman Nee, in the, in the 1945s, thereabout, 
There is a book. The breaking of the outer man for the release of the spirit. And let me tell you this. When I began to read the book, the first sentence is, is, is this. He said, the only work that the spirit, the only work that God recognizes is the work of the spirit. And when I read that phrase, I had to put the book down and be, meditate on that word for, for, for whatever. The only work that God recognizes is the work of the Spirit. That it made me understand when, when I began to meditate on that word, then the Holy Spirit began to bring scriptures over scriptures over me. Bring scriptures into my, my, my remembrance. That is why God said, no flesh can glory in my presence. If you come in carnality, there is no way that what you are doing will bless me. Because I have given you my spirit in the inside of me. In the inside of you. When you become a born again, he says, I have given you a new. I have re you, you know, your spirit man is, 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 is sanctified. Yes, my pastor is speaking. I don't want to go on there. But the Holy Spirit comes and then he, 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 he doesn't replace your spirit. What he does is he wants to be in unison with your Holy Spirit. With your spirit, sorry. The Holy Spirit comes and he comes in so that he becomes one with your spirit. And then he is the one who has absolute control of your spirit. But you see, our flesh becomes a blockage for the flow of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. And our soul is in the middle. Our soul becomes the referee. Your will, your emotions become the referee. He who determines what to do. And then the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, begins to sit and then he brings on you. What, what are you going to do with your own way? I am saying it to bring it back to what he said that prepared the way for the Lord. Amen. Even physically, when you go to, when you go, and you want, you probably, let me use the common one, you want to lose weight. You want to lose weight. And you are being told there are certain foods. Me, my problem, I will use myself. For I, I, I stayed at home for a, a week or two. And I realized that my belly is coming up again. Because I don't eat. I stopped eating late. And it went, it went, Alicia, it just went away. Now I'm at home. I don't exercise. I don't go out like I used to. And I eat late. And I just go back. And I realized that I'm gaining it again. Discipline. So God is telling us that you see what the Christian life is not as easy as you think it is. It requires a discipline. And that is what we don't want. It requires holiness. Because God has told us for without holiness, there is no one that can please me. There is no one that can come into my presence without holiness. Yes, Jesus has paid the price. But he even told you that you need to carry your own cross. You see him. He says you. You can't come. You, you, you need to deny yourself. I'm still in the scripture. I've not, I've, not, I've not died. He says prepare ye the way. If you want to see the glory of the Lord. If you want to see the things that God has spoken over your life. There are certain things. You need to, you need to let it go. That is why he says that. Let, let this wait. The things that easily weighs you down. Leave them. You went and you have been diagnosed. They are telling you that your high blood pressure, you, 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 you are, we are have finding traces of diabetes and all that stuff. Yet still, the things that you do, they are the same things that you eat. The sugar, you have not stopped. The chocolates, the, 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 the sweets, oh, you are still eating the same thing. And you are here praying. It's simple logic. Stop it. Discipline, prepare ye the way. He says holiness. There is no compromise. He says holiness. Holiness. Now people can still do funny stuff and can still come there and sing. And people will be falling under the power. And they think it is. There is no holiness in the church. God is not there. And then the four, he says that. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough place plain. I have finished my sermon. Whether it's teaching, whatever you take it.
He is telling us that when you prepare the way, mommy, he says everything has been finished, daddy. Everything that you need in life has already prepared for you. But there is a part you and I have to play. Prepare ye the way for the Lord. And then when he comes in, this is the promise that he is making to you. This is the promise. He, God doesn't mean words. The Holy Spirit, he doesn't mean words. He just tells you as it is. Every valley shall be exalted. Everything that is down, that you think it will never come up. Everything that you think it is hopeless and there is no hope. He says, I, the Lord, I will make it come up. Hallelujah. And then he continues to say, and every mountain, anything. Here, yeah, I remember the other time he says, who art thou, O mountain before Zerubbabel? For you shall be made like a plain. So he's telling you that anything in your life that looks like a mountain, that it thinks that it will never move. I, the Lord, I shall make it low. Prepare ye the way. And then he continues to say, and the crooked shall be made straight. What it is in your life that you think this one is so crooked, this one I can't do anything about it. What can the Lord do with me? He says, I, the Lord, I will make that crooked straight. Your child that is going wayward, he says, I, the Lord, I will make it straight. And then he says, and the rough places plain. Hallelujah. If this is your word and this word bless you, please don't forget to follow us on YouTube, on social media, Outreach International, Lady Rhoda, wherever you find us, we are there. Like this, share it, encourage somebody to be here. Next week, Friday, we will be here. And if you are in London area, we are in Stonebridge, please join us. For God is doing something. We just... Um, celebrated our 25 years anniversary last week it was amazing wonderful and god has spoken over us and i know that there is a move of god there is a wave of god last time i as i end i was talking to a, a, a pastor friend of mine and i was i was saying i was just encouraging him and i was just adding that you know there is a purging that is going on there and if this word falls in your heart please let, let me know Maybe this is the same thing that God is also expressing to you. There is a purging that is going on in the body of Christ. Because you see, God's timing, the time for him to come, when all the prophecies that are in, 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 in the scriptures, in Revelation, throughout the word, it is being fulfilled. They are all coming to pass. War, 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 war upon war, people going, whatever thing that God has said, it is happening. But the remnant... The remnant that God is going to use in this end time. Those, those people, he says, I will pour my, my spirit on all flesh. These things, you need to set yourself apart. You need to seek God. You need to ask him, God, what do you want me to do in this season? Where are you placing me? What do you want me to do? At my workplace, if that is where God has placed you, what do you want me to do there? In my ministry, what do you want me to do? I know a lot of people, sometimes they are wondering, where have I been and all that stuff? I need to come. But you see what? In as much as I really want to desire to come, sometimes I really want to. But I know when the time is right, God will make it happen. And so keep praying for me, my ladies. I have not forgotten about you. I'm still praying for you. But this is the time you need to prepare yourself. This is the time you need to win souls like never before. This is the time that everything that you do, you have to be conscious of your movement. Because someday, some way, you are going to stand before the king of kings and account for every single thing that you ever did. I am not saying because I have reached there, but I'm saying that we are in the season for you to be God conscious in everything that you do. Because the master is coming and he will be like a thief coming at the night. This is our healing ministry. Sometimes healing is not only the physical things. Whether you, you, you see the physical um, um, things, sickness or whatever. But sometimes we have emotional, we need emotional healing. We need a perspective, a right perspective in our life. Maybe that is the healing that you need. But whatever thing that it is, that it is. 
I want to pray to you. We, sorry, I want to pray with you as we end this broadcast. And then we have time to pray for those that are here with us. Father Lord, we thank you for your word that has come today. You have made the promises to us and you have said we should comfort ye your people for you are a good shepherd. I thank you for the word that has come today. And I stand upon this word and I decree and I declare that Father, anyone that has received this word, your word says that you will make every crooked path straight. Your word says you will make every mountain low. Your word says that anything that has exalted itself, you will bring it down. Every valley shall be exalted. As Father, we decree and we declare in agreement that this word is settled in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that, Father, every sickness that is on this platform, even as your word has come, it has entered into the marrow. It has, it has, it has created that asunder, the souls, the soul of the person. Ah, Lord, I thank you that you are the one who is diagnosing and you are the one who is fixing every pain, every mental illness, every depression in Jesus' as a mighty name. I pray in the name of Jesus that every pain that is at the sound of my voice, under the sound of my voice, be gone in Jesus' name. I cast you out in Jesus' name. Wherever you are hiding, that pain that comes and goes, and you are asking yourself, is this, is this really happening to me? Sometimes I think I feel pain, but sometimes it's not there, and I'm wondering whether I am speaking to somebody right now. You, you say to yourself, I'm wondering, is this really real? I, I feel like you, whatever thing that the enemy is throwing at you, you don't have it. And so I case that pain right now in Jesus' mighty name. You have been made whole. You were made whole. You were made whole. And healing is your portion. I curse that migraine right now in Jesus' mighty name. And in migraine, under the sound of my voice, I command you to live in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, angels of God. I thank you. I thank you for what you are doing right now. I thank you. I thank you. In Jesus' Jesus' mighty name, I hear miscarriage. I hear miscarriage. Anyone who is pregnant, anyone who has taken a seed that you are fearing that you are going to miscarry, ah, it will, you will not miscarry that child. You will not miscarry. May the angels of the Lord sustain this pregnancy until its full term. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord himself sustain this pregnancy. Somebody, if you are here, begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord himself sustain this pregnancy in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, yes, Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Spirit of the living God. Any Ajua on this platform, anyone who is called Ajua, I, 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 I I can't see i only see the faces people that i know but if you are a Jew on this platform this is what i hear may the lord protect you may the lord protect you may the hand of the lord be strong upon you in jesus mighty name i cancel every accident that the enemy has planned against your life ah you are protected by the blood you are protected by the blood in jesus mighty name i give you praise for what you are doing holy spirit I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Somebody begin to pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Let We thank you for your presence, Spirit of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you for your presence. Thank you that you are ministering to your people right now. We thank you for your ministration. We we thank you for your healing. We thank you for your healing. Ah, oh, we thank you for the river that is flowing. We thank you for the river that is flowing. When your word went forth, Lord, you healed them of all their diseases. You healed them of all their diseases. Every disease on this platform right now, every disease that is here right now, I pray for healing right now to take place. In Jesus' mighty name, miracles, signs, and wonders to follow us in this word in Jesus name yes Lord I thank you I thank you I thank you anyone who is developing whether you have heard breast cancer because it came and it went so I, I was just believing the Holy Spirit to bring that word back breast cancer maybe you have gone to the doctors and they have declared that they see these traces on you every cancer 
it is nullified to each root. We nullify that thing right now, that cancerous cells that is developing in your breast. We cancel it right now in Jesus' name. Somebody pray. Somebody pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. We cancel the cells in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, uh, every false evidence the enemy is showing you. Uh, you do not have no breast cancer. Refute it in Jesus' name. Uh, the Bible says, Whose report shall we believe? Uh, we shall believe the report of the Lord. Uh, and the report of the Lord says, We are healed. Uh, the report of the Lord says, We have been made whole. Uh, and that is your portion in Jesus' mighty name. It is cancelled. Somebody, don't forget to share your, your, your testimony. Don't forget to share your testimony. I love testimonies. It is cancelled. And do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For fear is not your portion. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. I give you praise for what you are doing right now. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you. Sometimes I'll tell you, when the, when the Holy Spirit is moving like this, I would encourage you, do not be in a rush to leave. Do not be in the rush to leave because you, may, you will never know what is coming next. You will never know. You will never know. Somebody is praying, believing God for money for business. You are believing God for money for business. You are believing God for money. Money. Money for business. You are asking him for some time now. That is your desire. That's your prayer topic. Lord, I want to start something. And I need money. You are believing him. I pray that that finances come right now in Jesus' name. If God is a good shepherd, if God is the good shepherd that he says he is, and by the word that has come today, may you receive that what your heart so desires in Jesus' mighty name. May that person that God has connected, God has placed in your heart to bless you. May that person never have any rest until they bring that that your heart so desires in Jesus' mighty name. Receive that. You will have that money and testify. If it is you and you want to put it on the, on, on, on the chat, I, I would. it is me. You can put it on there. But if you receive that testimony as well, please share it and tell the let us know that God has heard you, God has blessed you, and God has answered you. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for ministering to your people right now. Thank you for ministry. Thank you for ministering to them right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray for open doors. I pray for open doors. Every door that has been closed, that it is the season for it to be manifested and to be opened. I pray for that door to be opened right now in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. I feel that strongly in my spirit. Every door that has been closed, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, may that door be open for you. May that door be open for you. It is international door. Let it be open. Whatever door, whether it is ministry, whether it's your business, however God is going to open that door, whether it is in education, whether it is your learning, wherever you want to go, the ends of the earth, may the Lord open those doors for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord open those doors. May the Lord open those doors and nobody can close it. In Jesus mighty name. Whether it is a scholarship you so desire, may you receive it in Jesus mighty name. Ah, yes Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Ah, yes Lord. I give you all the praise. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray for new beginnings for people. New beginnings. New beginnings. New beginnings. In the mighty name of Jesus, you think that this thing you want, you want something new, something fresh. May the Lord Himself give you that freshness. May the Lord Himself give you that newness, newness of life, newness even for your business, newness in everything. In the name of Jesus, somebody, I wish you tap into it. Receive that newness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. Father, I give you praise. I'm standing here and I'm smiling. Ha! I had a vision today, this morning. 
and as I am ministering, um, I realized that those those things that I saw is what is happening now. Hallelujah, Daddy! I didn't even know. I didn't even realize it. But God showed me. God showed me what He was going to do. I didn't even connect it. But as I'm standing here and these words of knowledge and prophecies are coming, I realized that that is what God showed me this morning. And so somebody receive it because it has already been done. Remember what God said in His Word. He said that I am carrying you in my bosom, the heart of God for you is that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospering may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may he continue to shine his face towards you and be gracious to you and yours remember whatever you do in the name of the lord do it well <laughs> may the hand of the lord rest on you god bless you we'll be here next week if you are blessed Keep, keep following us. If you've not liked us, like my page, share it, follow us, Outreach International, follow Lady Rhoda. You know that all that I do is to put the word of the Lord there. God bless you. Keep praying for us and know that God has heard you today. Daddy, God bless you for, for being here with me. Mommy, God bless you. Mommy, I see all of you that I can see. God bless you so much. We love you. We pray for you and know that God has heard you. He is a good shepherd. I love you. Bye.